Son, when his daddy would visit, he'd come along. When they gather around and started talking, it's when Billy would take me walking through the backyard. We'd go walking, and he'd look into my eyes. Lord knows to my surprise, the only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only boy who could ever teach me. Was the son of a preacher man Yes he was, he was Ooh. Hey, how you doing? Justin here today We are going to check out a few different ways Of playing the son of a preacher man by Dusty Springfield I'm going to show you the kind of authentic way to play it I guess Which is in the key of E Using the chords E, A and B A little bit of D in the later part of the song For the key change We'll talk about that a little bit more But we're also going to check out different approaches to using a capo, how you can play the same song in a few different keys by using the capo or using the capo to find the chords and then taking the capo off to change the key of the song. It's a really great song for checking out these kind of ideas, so let's get stuck in. So the chord progression for the first couple of verses is an E chord for one bar, then A for two beats, and back to E for two beats. Then another bar of E, two, three, and then four bars of a B chord. Three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Okay, so that verse again. So, E chord was a preacher's son. When his A came walking, he'd E alone. B, when they gathered round and started talking, B chord would take me walking. Second bar of B. Would still go walking Another bar of beat Would look into my eyes Now the last bar To my surprise And then we're into the chorus Which is going The E chord That could ever reach me I was the son of an E chord man E again the dog Who could ever teach me A to the E chord Then it's E To B A Chorus again, so E for a whole bar, A for two beats, and E for two beats. Another full bar of E, two, three, four. Another A, half a bar, E for half a bar. Then half a bar of E, half a bar of B, to A, two, three, four. Then we're into another verse. So the structure is a verse, chorus, verse chorus and then there's a bridge now in the bridge something funky happens which is a key change so actually the whole song moves up a fourth during the bridge so we end up when we come back to the choruses at the end we're actually in a different key a fourth high that means the first chord instead of going to be an e it's going to be an a so let's check out the bridge and then how it goes into that new key so the end of the chorus is going the e to b is it way now for the bridge it goes to a D for a whole bar first with nothing, then the vocals start. How well I remember A that look that was in his eyes, sealing kisses from me on the slide. B taking time to make time, second bar of B telling me he's all mine. E learning from each other's knowing. Looking to see how much we're growing And the only one who could ever reach me Was the son of a preacher man We're in the new key now And it turned to ever teach me D The son of a preacher man You see he was, he was It's a really interesting little situation we got going on here So again, the bridge, one bar of D with nothing then the vocals. How well I remember A, that look that was in his eyes. The second bar of A, kisses for me on the slide. B, taking time to make time. Second bar of B, telling me he's all mine. E, learning from each other's knowing. Looking to see how much we've grown. And the now we're in the chorus. 
So you can see there the melody is the same relative to the chords, but we're in a new key. It's not so common these days. I don't, I'm not exactly sure why, to be honest. It's a, a, quite a good trick, and it definitely lifts the song up a little bit. You can feel the energy changes. It does pose a few problems if you're not a confident singer like me. Suddenly you've gone up a whole heap. It's a bit like, whoa, is this still going to be in my range? Obviously not a problem for amazing singers like Dusty Springfield. So before we get into the key changey stuff, I want to talk a little bit about the rhythm, which we haven't even touched on yet. There are lots of different options here. The original recordings, the uh, guitar is quite sparse, so you've got a lot of freedom here to try different things. If you've relatively new to guitar or you're struggling with your rhythm you can definitely keep it super simple don't be afraid of that okay sometimes simple rhythms are going to be better something like down 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 as a starting point it's going to work really well obviously simple one two three and four one two three and four if you start loosening it up as long as you're keeping your hand moving, you can start to add in a few upstrokes here and there. And it starts to get a little bit more interesting. The, the key thing there is keeping the hand moving. If you're going to do that, if you start with that basic pattern and just allow yourself to pop in some upstrokes, that should work pretty good. I have got a set pattern that I'm going to show you as well. I know a lot of people find it a bit awkward if I just say, hey, start with that simple one and just make it up. Uh, it will come with time. If you're that person, you're like, oh, I can't just do that. Don't give up. Keep trying with a set simple pattern and then just allow yourself to try and free it up a little bit and add in a few strums and keep that arm moving. Once you've got used to the skill, it's relatively easy to apply to any song that you learn. So it's definitely uh, one to keep on the burner if you're still struggling. But a set pattern, if you want one nice one, will be this. One, two, E and a three, E and four, E and a one, two, E and a three, E and four, E and a down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, one, two, E and a three. Do remember that the last upstrum in that pattern is very likely to be open strings while you're changing chords, particularly a transition from like E to B. You're going to hit the open strings. It's totally fine. Everybody does it when they're playing, so it's nothing to be afraid of. You don't have to try and jump to that chord super quick. Okay, something I talk about quite a lot in my beginner's course, but in case you haven't stumbled upon that particular lesson and you're learning this song, one thing you're probably going to notice pretty quickly if you try and apply that strumming pattern is that many times the chord changes halfway along the bar. Now, when that happens, we don't have a strum on beat three in that pattern. What we have is the strum on the last 16th note of beat two. And when that happens, you would change chords there not afterwards. So you'd end up with, uh, like the, in the basic verse pr pattern, you'd have that E. A, A, E. Okay, so we've got the chord change. A for two down strums. The rest would be on the E. Down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 down. For that bit, I'd probably resort to change the pattern up a little bit there. Just a one, two, one. Feels like it wants to be more just down strums on that pit, but again, you got to feel it out. Once you're used to your hand moving consistently, you probably won't find it that difficult to change the strumming pattern a little bit for different sections. It's a very common thing to do, much like a drummer would simplify patterns a little bit for different sections of the song or where there are different accents needed. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about simplifying the song by using the capo because a lot of people are going to find a bit of a struggle there with the B chord. Do remember, you know, you can play the B like that. I often play it with my little finger, my third finger resting on the top. Some people prefer to play the B chord like that. Like, it doesn't really matter which one of those versions of the B you're going to play. You might find that all of them difficult and you're like, man, I want to play this song, but I don't want to be playing it with the bar chord B. Well, there's actually a pretty simple solution and that is using the capo. If we put a capo, on the second fret, instead of having an E chord as the first chord, we'd now have a D chord. Now you can think of it, if I take the capo off for a second, there's a D, if we move it up one, there's a D sharp, there is an E. Okay, so you can hear 
that E sounds the same. Okay, instead of having an A chord, you can use a G chord now, that obviously my first finger is where the capo would be. It sounds the same as the A, you can see that there's an A chord there. Just changing the grip of it a little bit. And then the B chord, well that's just, obviously it's an A chord with the bar there at the second fret. So capo second fret, there. If I just get that, always make sure you get the capo right up next to the fret there. So now you'd have D was a preacher's son when his G chord would visit his D along. And it done away with a talking A, and we go walking. Stay on the A, then we go walking. A, still on the A, and one more bar. Lord knows to my surprise, the D chord one that could ever teach me. G was a kind of a D chord man. G now the D chord one is D. It's A G chord. Now the bridge of that song then went to a D chord. Now the way that we get around the D chord now, we change it to a C. Can you see that all of the chords have moved down one tone? So the E has moved to a D, so E, E flat D. The A chord moved to a G. Each one has moved down. B moved to an A. Now we've got a D chord that would move to a C shape. Okay, you can also, if you just think again, without the capo, there's a C. C sharp, D. So it is, you can clearly see that it is a D chord. So that bridge, you see, A would turn to G B would change to A D would change to D E would change to D is what I'm not sure that's what I said on the Now in the chorus The G would you down for preach miss He was the son of an acorn man Once you're feeling confident playing it with the capo at the second fret and you understand this idea of changing the chords using the capo, a really great exercise I'd like you to try is doing exactly the same thing but now with the capo at the seventh fret. So I'm not changing the key, I want the key to sound the same, so the chord to still sound like the E chord, but we're going to put a capo on the seventh fret. So see if you can work that out. It would be a really great exercise. It's a wonderful thing to do if you're jamming with somebody. If, you, if you're feeling confident with these chords playing the B chord, but you're playing with a guitar player who's not as confident with their bar chords, you can pop a capo on there on the, on the seventh fret or the second fret if you know how to do it and you can transpose the song. This capo stuff is also great if you want to change the key. If I was finding that song a little bit too high, which I wasn't, I was finding it, if anything, a little bit too low, but I can change the key of the song now. So instead of doing the E, B, A thing, I could now change it so that we're starting on that D chord, like we had the capo at the second fret, but without a capo, it'll be lower. Billy Ray was a preacher's son, and when his daddy would visit, he'd come along. When they gathered round and started talking That's when Billy would take me walking Through the backyard we'd go walking Then he'd look into my eyes Lord knows to my surprise The only one who could ever reach me Was the son of a preacher man Now you might ask then why would I want to change the key then and you know transpose it down I could just use a capo or I could use a capo lots of other ways the reason that sometimes you want to change the chords that you use is because of the different variations and the different embellishments you can add for particular chord shapes. You might find that you favor some more than others. So there are lots of different reasons to explore using different chord shapes to play the so same songs as well as transposing. Sometimes it's just a funky thing to try out. Nearly forgot to explain the intro there, I did promise earlier. Now the intro only works if you're playing it in the key of E, using the E, B and the A thing, because it uses open strings, so it won't work with the capo. Okay, just to warn you in advance, but let's go and check it out. <laughs> Ah, 
it's really nice isn't it so second finger 11th fret fourth string third finger 11th fret on the second string you're going to play them both together and slide them up one fret so you're probably going to i'm using picking a finger there okay then we're going to play the thinner string and now little finger is going to play a harmonic if you're not familiar with harmonics there's plenty of lessons over on the site about doing that you basically touch the string very lightly if you press it down hard you get the note if you press very softly you get a harmonic they ring longer okay worth noting that the slide onto the 12th fret is the beat so three four e and a one e and a two three four then this is the same shape 10th fret sliding down to the ninth then the open string again sometimes i play the thicker string after that but that's not on the record so three four e and a one e and a two three four one e and a two three four e and a one e and a two three four one e and a two three four. sometimes i add a little second fret to fourth fret hammer on before going to the e chord just kind of sounds cool also worth noting that you use the same riff with a different timing in the instrumental section after the first chorus but i'll leave you to have a listen and suss that out on your own obviously this lesson got a little bit more involved than a standard song lesson going into all of the transposing and using the capo stuff but those things are really great skills to get in your toolkit if you can play the same chords using different grips things get real interesting and do go and check out my chord shape explorer module over on the website where i talk about all of the different variations of the different chord shapes and why you might want to choose some over others and yeah all the different ornaments that kind of live in each one that often don't work with other chord shapes that's kind of the point of all of that as well as the transposing part anyway really hope you enjoyed this one do remember we've got a great new song request board over on justinguitar.com forward slash songs where you can request songs vote on which ones i'm going to be filming up next so i'll see you for plenty more very soon you all take care of yourselves bye bye